Today we're gonna to be covering what Amazon FBA private label actually is and all the different steps that you need to go through to actually truly be successful with Amazon FBA private labeling. Now there's a lot of different ways to sell on Amazon. So there's private labeling, there's uh, online arbitrage or retail arbitrage, uh, you have wholesale, and then you have drop shipping. So I'm not here to you know, put down any of the other business models um, except for drop shipping. Don't do drop shipping. Uh, you will get your account suspended, I promise you. There's, there's no way around that. Don't listen to these guys out there talking about drop shipping being a good business model. It's a very temporary business model. So the first factor to consider with Amazon private label is the fact that at the end of the day, you own the brand. So all the work and effort that you put in um, to this side hustle ends up paying off long-term for you because you actually own the brand as opposed to maybe selling a whole lot of stuff really quickly, but you have no real business. You're just a reseller at that point. Like once again, I'm not trying to put anybody down here, but if you're doing like arbitrage, for example, yeah, you own a business, but you don't own anything, right? Like you have like an Amazon storefront with reviews and all that, but if that supply ever gets taken away from you for whatever reason, or especially the people out there that are doing retail arbitrage, if for some reason you can't go do that anymore, your business is basically over. And that's just one of the many, many problems with these other models. Private label is more legitimate. In other words, you're building a brand and you will then go ahead and scale that brand. Um, do you make money as quickly with private label? I'll be completely honest with you, you probably don't. You know, most people don't. You have to be very fortunate because there is a little bit of luck here at the same time involved in, in developing products online or developing products in general, or better yet, business in general, involves just a tiny bit of luck, right? So the percentage is about 45% skill, 45% effort, and 10% luck. Now the first step of private labeling products for Amazon is to do your product research. And you can obviously use all the, you know, all the familiar tools, right? All the ones you see out there, the Helium 10s and the Jungle Scouts. And what you wanna do is, is you want to find products that have high demand and low competition. And I know you've heard this over and over and over again about high demand, low competition. And I gotta tell you something, there's a reason for it. That's why we all keep saying it. And that's just a component of it though, something you have to keep in mind. Yes, high demand, low competition, but it doesn't end there. Okay, because you need to differentiate your products and you need to customize those products so people actually want to buy your products. In contrast from what you might see on TikTok where someone might say, hey, you know, you could buy this product on Alibaba for 10 cents and then you go and sell it on Amazon for $5. What they forget to show you and what they forget to tell you is most of these products that they're showing you have thousands of reviews on Amazon, right? So none of that will work. None of the products these people show you will work. They're all bad ideas. So if you're online right now trying to find a product to sell because someone's gonna give you some kind of secret formula or some secret product, you're going about this all wrong because you need to figure out how you need to do your product research, right? So yes, there's things in place that you need to follow. Like I said, high demand, low competition products, and we won't go into all the intricacies of product research today. But what you wanna keep in mind is that, yes, high demand, low competition, but you wanna differentiate the product and customize the product as much as possible. And there's different ways to go about that. One of the easiest ways to differentiate your product and customize your product for, for customer satisfaction is to look at your competitors' reviews. I know they're not your competitors yet, but these people on Amazon that you're using as an example product, right? So the product that you found on Amazon while you're doing your product research, go ahead and look in the reviews and look for terms like, I wish it did this, loved it, but fill in the blank, right? Because these people are essentially telling you what some, you know, pretty successful products on Amazon. I hope you're using successful products as an example product, right? So you're looking at people that are doing well on Amazon. So these people, are fairly successful with the product, but the customers are still giving them some reasons to differentiate their product. They're voicing their concerns about the product. So if you were to do that and take that kind of mindset to product differentiation, and let's at the end of the day, let's call this product development because essentially you're doing product development. And if you were to take that kind of mindset to your product development, you're gonna develop products that win all day, every day. Let's look at a couple examples, right? So let's just say our keyword was something like, Screwdriver, rotating screwdriver, ratcheting screwdriver, something along those lines, right? So here we have two screwdrivers. I mean, they're, they're different, right? But I mean, essentially, screwdriver, screwdriver. Now, this one is not ratcheting. This one is ratcheting, okay? This one has bit storage, okay? So let's just say, you know, what customers were saying was, mm, I really liked it, but 
the bits fall out, right? Let's say the bits fall out. Well, maybe develop a screwdriver that the bits can't fall out, right? And it still has internal bit storage. So in other words, you're solving that problem, right? You're solving the customer's concern. And in this instance here, what you're actually doing is you're giving them a differentiator that they weren't even looking for. So, I mean, this doesn't happen all the time, okay, where you're able to differentiate in this way like we did it in, in this specific way. But that's what you wanna look for. If there's a way to, yes, solve the problem, but let's just say you can not only solve the problem and then step it up to another level where you're solving a problem the customer did not even know they had. And if you can harness that within your product development, you will have a winning product. So after you've sorted all that out, you know what you wanna sell, you know what you're gonna to do to differentiate your product, now it's time to find the supplier for your product. And I mean, let's be real here, guys, you're gonna end up on Alibaba. That's really you know, where you're gonna source products from. Most of the products on Amazon come from Alibaba. Most of the world's factories are in Alibaba. There's no way of getting around that, right? Plus, Alibaba gives you some assurances like you know, that other websites aren't or going direct to factory might not necessarily give you. So, you know, things like trade assurance, right? You can actually uh, check on those suppliers or you can actually do the transaction through Alibaba as opposed to sending them a wire. You're somewhat covered when it, when it comes to that, so that's good. Um, the other benefit is the systems are in place for you to communicate with these suppliers um, in the easiest possible way as opposed to like Googling Chinese factories or factories wherever, right? But for the purposes of today, let's just say you go in the route of Alibaba, right? That's where you're gonna go find your supplier. You're gonna go on Alibaba. You're gonna find the supplier to develop your product. During this phase of the process, right, you're essentially sending them an RFQ, which is a, a request for quote, and you're giving them some product specifications of what you actually want for your product. And then the sample process starts. You will get a ton of samples and you're gonna have to pay for those samples, okay? This is not a place to be cheap. I've seen people do this day in and day out where they won't even get a sample and the first product they ever see is an off the line product and they end up pulling it from their Amazon stock. That's stupidity. Okay, you're investing a lot of money, not just the money in the product, but the time that you're putting into it, your own personal time. There's a cost to your own personal time. Okay, there's a cost of business, a cost of doing sales when it comes to that. Your own personal time is so valuable. So you're spending money on product, you're spending your time, okay? So this isn't a place to cheap out. You wanna make sure that you get as many samples as you think you need, okay? Do not settle here. Now there is such a thing as over differentiating a product, okay? You don't wanna over differentiate a product. We do have a video coming out about product differentiation. We'll get to that when that video comes out. But you don't wanna over differentiate either. You want to essentially differentiate your product to your specification. And no matter how many samples it takes, you need to go back and forth at that factory. Don't skip steps here. Because once the product's in your possession, you're done. There's no refunds in China. Okay, that consumer mindset of refunds, you're not an Amazon customer anymore. You're an Amazon seller. So forget about that. Once you buy that product and it's in your possession, you're an adult, it's yours. So what you need to do is need to limit your risk by making sure everybody's on the same page. And the key to that is finding the right supplier and being extremely clear with that supplier. Take the time you need. The supplier is gonna rush you because they just wanna make a deal and they wanna get paid. Okay, the people working at the factory, as nice as they are, and we have some wonderful relationships with people over in China, and they're great people. But at the end of the day, when you're talking to someone, you're talking to a salesperson. And frankly speaking, they don't care. Because most of the time, people will never reorder, right? Because they'll, they'll try it that first time, and there's a lot of inexperienced Amazon sellers out there that fail every single day. And factories hear the same story all the time. And you could tell them you're different and you're a long-term seller all you want. They don't care. So don't trust them, especially in the beginning. Long-term, obviously, once you start reordering, then, you know, naturally they'll take care of you more, make sure your product is perfect. And I mean, can you really blame them, guys? It's human nature, right? This is how people act. When they think they're just gonna make one deal, you know, they're gonna only put so much effort in your product. It's on you to run the show. You're the boss, okay? It's your business, it's your brand. And if you get a defective product from China, it's only your fault. Nobody else is responsible for it but you. So while you're sourcing, obviously you're gonna go through all these customization or differentiations that you initially found, right? So you're gonna differentiate your product, you're gonna customize your product, you're gonna customize the packaging, and you will be working with the factory. Speaking of working with the factory, then it'll come time for ordering and shipping, right? So when it comes to making your first order, what you wanna do is you want to order the least amount of units 
as you can while staying profitable. So what do I mean by this? So what I mean is there's usually a MOQ or a minimum order quantity with, with factories, right? So you need to order a minimum. You can't order one. It's usually a couple hundred pieces. You know, if a lot of factories try to tell you 500, 1,000, most cases you're, you're able to order maybe 100, closer to 200 pieces for that first initial order. But your, p your piece price or uh, price per unit is gonna be much higher. So the goal here, or the key, is to make sure that you still make money on that initial order, even though you're ordering many less units than you would eventually. So then when you step up to the thousands, it becomes that much more profitable. And that's how we scale this thing called Amazon FBA, right? So you will essentially increase your profitability per unit, obviously a higher commitment. But in the beginning, you wanna limit risk. So you wanna buy just enough units that the factory will accept your order. They'll differentiate the product for you because if your, your order is too low, they're not gonna do a custom order for you, right? They're not gonna do it for one or five pieces. You need to be in the hundreds. So that order needs to be high enough to make them happy and low enough to keep you comfortable at the same time with the risk that you're about to take. Because guys, this is business and it's a risk, right? So there's no guarantees in anything, right? There's no guarantees in life except for taxes and debt. So just keep that in mind. Don't go out and order you know, 10 gajillion units because what happens if you can't sell them, right? So, you know, limit it as much as possible, then check the business case. Because like I said, it, if the quantities are too low, you're not gonna get a good price. So, you know, make sure that you're making at least, or at least have the potential to make money with that, with that first order. Next, the factory will most likely help you with your shipping. So what you wanna do is ask them for DDP shipping. So what that basically means is your, your duties are paid by the factory. The factory will take care of all the shipping for you. And all you have to do is essentially just give them the labels from Amazon and they, they, they ship it for you, right? So you do the shipping plan through Amazon and you provide them with labels. Um, and it will magically end up at Amazon as everybody likes to say. I mean, it's not so magically, but yeah, after you make the shipping plan and you, know, they, you give them the labels and the stuff will end up at Amazon. So they will take care of that for you. So when it comes to shipping from China, Right. So, you know, I know it's a very popular thing out there where people are searching for, you know, uh, a sourcing from Alibaba and then shipping to Amazon. It's not that hard. Um, you know, those factories will help you. Most cases, those factories will help you either somebody from the factory or you might have run into a sourcing agent. And if that's the case, um, they definitely know what to do. Right. So you don't have to really worry about that too, too much. But what you want to do is as far as shipping goes, you want to just make sure you understand the cost. So you understand the costs that uh, that you're getting. So let's say you're doing DDP. That means the duties and the tariffs and everything's included. So whatever shipping price they give you, everything should be included. Um, and you want to be careful with that because you might get a price for just the product itself and think that's the whole price, right? I mean, guys, this has happened. Like I'm not right. So this has happened to a lot of people. They'll they'll say, hey, it's this much a unit. And then when it comes time to ship it, they were never expecting the shipping price. So make sure you understand the differences, right? So they're gonna, they're gonna quote you for the actual price and for the actual product price, and then they're gonna quote you for the shipping. And you need to add that together. And that ends up being your final landed cost. That's what they mean by landed, right? Landed means it's here in Amazon. It's landed, right? Um, so this is something that you need to sort out, but you need to ask, ask questions, have them take care of the harder part of the shipping, you might pay slightly more compared to you going out and trying to figure out the shipping yourself, but you're going to save time and kind of minimize the issues that could potentially come up because if something happens to the product, the shipping is insured, right? When they're, when they're shipping it, right? So you're probably going to be okay. In most cases, if you go out the first time and just try to figure it out and get the best possible shipping deal, you don't know what you're going to do to yourself. So I would always kind of err on the side of the caution and just have the factory do the shipping for you. Now, when it comes to selling on Amazon, Right. So now we've, we've gone through all this. This is months of time, right? Months of times pass. I mean, if you're good, maybe you got it done in three months. Most people, six months to a year, right? When it's all said and done, they get everything done. Now, once it actually lands in Amazon, now it's time to start selling on, on Amazon. And the biggest mistakes I see people doing is they, they're cheap now. Now all of a sudden you get cheap, right? You spent all this money, right? You, 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 you made a nice listing. You took pictures, you paid for a copywriter or not. I don't know what you did. Um, you paid a lot of money for inventory. You put a lot of your time into it. And then when it comes time to launch a product and get some reviews on it, <laughs> nobody wants to do Vine. I dislike Vine for a lot of reasons. Okay. I've done videos on it. I'm not a fan of how the infrastructure of Vine works, or maybe I'm just like a little butthurt because I was in this game and we used to do our own incentivized reviews and Amazon basically stepped in and said, no, you can't do incentivized reviews, but we can. That's essentially what Vine is. 
And I've noticed that the Vine reviewers have become kind of big babies over the last couple of years, and they're very particular about their products. But there's no denying the power of giving away 30 products and then maybe getting 25 reviews, right? So imagine launching with 25 to 30 reviews on your product. That's very powerful. And even though you're spending a little bit of money, you cut down so much time on getting that product ranked and then trying to, trying to get reviews some other way that you're gonna end up paying for it anyway. Let's be serious and maybe some weird ways that you can end up getting reviews. And honestly, if you have no reviews on a product, can you sell a product with no reviews? Absolutely, but let me ask you something. When's the last time you bought something on Amazon with no reviews on it? Seriously, probably never. Most people have never bought a product on Amazon with zero reviews on it, and you're expecting someone to buy a product with no reviews. Can I sell that product? Absolutely, we've done it many, many times in the past. If you're not willing to spend a little money with Amazon Vine, it becomes so much harder to convert your, your PPC, your marketing. So then your marketing gets tremendously more expensive. You're spending the money somewhere. Right, you're spending the money somewhere. And realistically, the review rates we see, we see about a 4% review rate on products. So do that math of how many products you would have to sell in order to get 25 to 30 reviews. You'll never get that in your first shipment. It's gonna take you several shipments to get there. Why even play games? Just budget for it. Budget for the fact that you're gonna give away 30 products when you launch a product. Budget for the fact that you're gonna have to give Amazon their $200 extortion fee for Amazon Vine and just deal with it. And just know that that's how you're actually gonna have to launch your product. When you actually launch your product and start selling, guys, patience here is the name of the game, okay? It's gonna take money for you to rank your product and start making those sales. You'll likely not be profitable in your first order, maybe not your second order. It's gonna take a couple orders. Have people been profitable on their first orders? Yes, but it's uncommon. Okay, so you need to adjust your expectation of what to expect out of Amazon FBA. And guys, I don't think I'm scaring anybody away here. And if I am, that's all good, because if someone told you that you're gonna get rich overnight on Amazon FBA, they straight lie to you. We've launched over 150 brands on Amazon, and I'm telling you, this is no get rich quick, this is hardcore brand building. Okay, we are doing product development, and then we're doing brand development. We're doing hardcore marketing, right? This is a real business that you're building here. So don't think that Amazon's the golden goose. Amazon is a big algorithm at the end of the day, okay? It's a search engine. It provides the platform. Don't think you just put your stuff on Amazon and it just sells. I see this a lot with people who've maybe done arbitrage or wholesale, or they think they're doing wholesale, but whatever, that's another topic we won't get into today. Um, let's say people do an arbitrage and they see how quickly like Nike sells or whatever right? You're reselling food, whatever you're getting, right? You're getting it from Marshalls or TJ Maxx or, or, or Ross, and you're, you're selling a lot of items that you shouldn't be, but it's what it is, right? Some of them you can be selling, and I respect any hustle, okay? A hustle's a hustle. But you see how quickly those sell, and you perfectly know that because you know how to look up things like BSR, right? So you know, hey, this item needs a bestseller rank of 20,000 or less, and it'll sell fast. But you forget when you launch a private label product, your BSR is like a million. So it takes time to get that BSR down and then build up those reviews. We find that when people get into the Amazon FBA game and they have clear expectations and they have a willingness to roll up their sleeves and hustle and work and they're not looking for shortcuts, they are extremely successful and they truly change their lives. But when people get into this game and they're just trying to look for get rich quick, they're looking for every single black hat tactic they, they could think of, um, they fail every single time. They're the ones who get their account suspended and basically cry scam. Say, hey, Amazon FBA is a complete scam and Jeff Bezos is a piece of trash and all this. Stuff. Jeff's not even involved anymore. He has no idea what's going on, guys, right? And I understand where a lot of the grief comes from with Amazon. We've been at this game for a long time, okay? I'm in the seller forums all the time. Like, I understand. But it, it's their platform and you need to play by the rules. And if you do things appropriately and right, 90% of the time, you'll be okay. That other 10%, that's kind of a coin toss, right? Like things happen all the time, right? But if you do things like you should, right? Treat this like a normal business, try not to cheat, and you have a huge potential for success here. Just remember guys, Amazon's a platform. At the end of the day, you're running your business on that platform. Your goal should be to make sales on that platform, utilize that platform for its volume, and get, you know, build your brand and start migrating some of those customers off Amazon. And while you're doing that, you're building a brand name for yourself. We see it all the time in search results. 
people start to come up in PPC. Customers are actually searching for their brand name. You could build something tremendous from nothing, right? But it's not overnight, it takes time, it takes hard work, it takes effort, it takes dedication. Guys, if you have any questions about Amazon FBA private label, throw them down below.